Do you ever struggle with fear, hopeless thoughts, or feeling like you're not good enough? If so, today's podcast is absolutely for you. In it, we are talking to Kelly Bellari, author of the books Fear Fighting and Battle Ready, about how we can recognize the negative thought patterns we all deal with on a regular basis and how we can take these thoughts captive for Christ. In this podcast, Kelly shares so many awesome insights that I just know you're going to be writing things down so you can come back to them again and again. So if this is something that you have dealt with in your life or are dealing with currently, and you would like to learn how to take your thoughts captive to Christ and live in the freedom that God promises us, definitely stay tuned because this is one podcast you are not going to want to miss. All right. Well, today we are talking with Kelly Bellari, author of the books, Fear Fighting and Battle Ready. Thank you so much, Kelly, for agreeing to talk with us today. Brittany Ann, I am so excited to be with you today. I love your heart and your mission, and I know we're just going to have such a wonderful conversation. I am so excited to talk to you as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to dive right in and ask you about your two books because I have I have them on my phone right now and they are awesome, but I definitely want to share them with anybody listening today. So can you give us just a really quick recap of those two books, what they are about, who they are for, and why anybody should care? Absolutely, Brittany. And the first book is Battle Ready, Train Your Mind to Conquer Challenges, Defeat Doubt, and Live Victoriously. You know, God tells us that we have the mind of Christ, but he also says that we have to renew our mind, not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed, right, by this renewal. And so I wrote the book as I was like, God, I need help with this. I want your promises to be my thoughts. And so that was the journey for writing the book. It reads like a manual for the everyday woman. And whether she's in one season and then five years in a different season or next month in a different place, it's the kind of book that's practical, actionable insights on how she can really transform her thoughts and her mind so that her life is transformed because we know we're all living in a battle. And for, for those of you who might be, you know, say, um, I love the idea of renewing my mind and transforming my thoughts and seeing my life battle ready, ready to confront the battles that I want to face, but I just don't have enough money for the book. I want to encourage you on IamBattleReady.com. I have a whole ton of resources to help you do just that, to renew your mind. So, you know, if you can't afford the book, there's something still for you too, and you can visit IamBattleReady.com. Fear Fighting, on the other hand, is a book all about conquering fear. It's about awakening courage. And I was in this place, I grew up with a lot of fear. I've been very afraid. I've um, had many different illnesses that have happened to me. I've had an emotional traumas. I've gone through the ringer of just different issues that have hit me and it's created a lot of fear within me. And maybe I'm not alone. Maybe some of you feel that way too. I started to say to God, God, I know you didn't create me to be fearful. You created me to be faithful. So the question is, Lord, how do I, how, how do you as a savior want to save me from this? And it was a journey of a book to just say, okay, I'm going to share my story of getting fearless with others. And I can just raise my hand today and say, you know, God really did it. I fear so much less. Nobody's perfect. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm always fearless, but um, I am so much more faithful. And he did it. And he'll do it again. And the testimony is there. And it's all in the book. And it's full, again, of practical insights and wisdom and the joy of just learning to be present in the present moment. So those are the two books. And... You can find them both on Amazon or wherever books are found. Battle Ready is your daily manual, and Fear Fighting is a journey, an awakening, and an and a adventure into fearlessness. So let's talk a little bit more about this fear that you were just talking about a second ago. Um, I know that fear is something that a lot of women deal with, especially as moms. We have so many fears, but I think it's really normal in our society to the point that we don't always even realize how fearful we're being um, because we're just so used to it and it's all around us everywhere. So can you give us just a little bit of insight into what are some of the most common fears that women deal with and what kind of signs should they look for to recognize if fear is a problem in their life or if it's just something that they have a normal level of that they don't need to worry about? 
common thoughts with fear are, I feel not enough. I feel inadequate. I'm not as good as that other girl. You know, I'm afraid that I'll never measure up or that God, that God really doesn't love me or that I'll be stuck in this situation forever or that he's never going to come through or I'm always going to be like this, right? Or fears that I'm too much. Like, what if I'm this way? Will that girl really like me? You know, I had an eating disorder, Brittany Ann, and I, I got that in college. And at that point, I just felt like I needed to perform and I needed to get the perfect job coming out of school. And so I kind of morphed into this person who was just everything to everyone. So Brittany Ann, if I was in front of you and I noticed, oh, she wants me to be the godly woman, I would put on that front for you to please you because I was so afraid I wouldn't be accepted and that I'd be rejected. And I kind of became everything to everyone that I became a no one to myself and lost to God. And some of us can be living that in our daily basis. You know, we can be putting on these fronts completely lost to who we really are. And I think that that's the predicament of fear. And, and the more we get into it, the more it just keeps on evolving because we start to fear the fact that we're fearing. We start to worry. We start to get anxious. We start to be nervous. We get, ang you know, um, social conditions, whether it's around people. And, and God has a heart to heal. He is the great physician. And just because we've had these thoughts all the way back since we can remember them, doesn't mean that they're right. And it doesn't mean that they're without sin involved in them. Like God wants to heal us. We just have to come to him, ask him, and open up our heart to receive through his word, through prayer, the healing that Jesus Christ won for us on the cross. So I know in your book, Fear Fighting, you talk about eight fear inducers. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means and what those are just so that we as Christian women who are thinking, you know, maybe I do struggle with fear. Um, maybe I'm kind of seeing some of this in my life so that we can really pinpoint what it is we're looking for to know if this is something that applies to us. Absolutely. Um, I want to let you know that there are eight fear inducers, and it's, and it's true, but I want to say even before we go into that, I want to tell you how fear works, right? We tend to have a stimulus that causes us to fear, and we're like, I am so afraid of this thing. And then we say to ourselves, oh, and we indulge the fear, right? So we go into it, and we're like, oh, I'm fearing that thing. And then we go into self-condemnation. I can't believe I feared. I'm messing up again, right? I'm upset at myself. And so we're building what's called a neural track in our mind of fear, where we're solidified. It's kind of like a rocking chair. It makes grooves into the ground. We're setting a track where our chair will always land in that same groove. And because of that self-condemnation, we go back again and we perpetuate the cycle of fear. And it's like this rolling snowball, right? It's like a rolling snowball. So we have to first take a step back and understand what are the fear inducers? What's going to cause us to step into that fear? What's going to cause us to start that ball rolling in a negative way? And the enemy is surely one of them. He is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And trust me, if he knows that you have a wound, because something happened to you as a child. He's going to try to make you fear again and again. He's going to try to rip open that wound so he can work his lies in there and send you down the road of fear because you can't love when you're full of fear. Like you really can't love well when you've got fear. It's the perfect love of God that actually casts out the fear so you can love others well. So the devil's number one, control. You know, anytime we take things into our own hand, the weight of that comes onto our shoulder. So we're then walking around in our environment weighted down. We're heavy with what we've got on us, but we were never meant to carry the load. Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden because his desire is to take the loads off of us. But if we say, no, I want to carry the load and I want to fix these people and I want to handle these problems and I need to have all the answers, we've taken the load onto ourselves and that's not our calling. People pleasing is another one and I just described it. Um, you know, when we have to be everything to everyone, we're no one to ourselves and we feel lost to God. People pleasing is losing who you are. It's anti-freedom. It's against freedom because you are so concerned with all them, you never get to discover it's for freedom that Christ has set you free and to live uniquely you. If God wanted another someone else, he would have created them, but no, he created you. You see, because only you can bring to the world what you bring. The other one is worry. Worry. If you are pondering all the bad things that are going to happen to you, you can't ponder the goodness of the Lord that's at work for you. So worry really can trip us up. Comparison, the second we look at that girl and we say over there, she's doing that and she's, and he, da, 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 you know, and I'm not enough and do, do, do. We are negating, we are dispelling faith. We're saying she has something, what she has is better. But meanwhile, right, 
God, right, when we seek after God with all our heart, like, and we lean not on our own understanding, when we trust him, when we go after him, his desire is to give us the desires of our heart. But if we're looking and saying how she got the desires of our heart, we can't even acknowledge what the desires of our own heart are. Waiting while trembling is another one, okay? We all, listen, I raise my hand and I'm like, I don't like waiting, God. So, I, mean, I just... I, I admit it, it's hard, like waiting for God to show up, waiting for a plan, waiting for people to change, waiting for money to come through. I understand it's difficult. I think that the Lord has given us times of wait because he wants to meet us there. Like uh, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Why will it rise as we wait upon the Lord? Because we get to hold hands with the Lord. We get to talk with the Lord. We get to discover that it's not so much about that thing that we're after or that person changing as it is about letting God change us or being renewed or understanding how much he loves us or seeing who he really is. So we can wait well. It's true. We really can. Rejection. That will come and tangle us up into so much stuff, namely unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, it is going to take room in your heart. It's going to take space in your heart. It's like decay. It's like a tooth, right? You have a root canal. You have plaque in there. You have decay, and it's spilling, filling up that whole root. And God says, do not let a root of bitterness take root. Do not. Do not. Do not. Why? Because it doesn't hurt you. It, it doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. It holds you back. It, it, it restrains you. How, how can anyone reject you, my sisters? when Christ accepts you. And that's what we come into. That's the reality that is the, is the reality. And so we just want to get our hands around that through battle ready or fear fighting, which either of those books, we get our hands into that and start to let that not become part of our mind, but move it into our heart. And the past, I can't tell you how many friends I have who are thinking and talking about things that happened in the past. You know that person where you feel like maybe they broke through, but then they start going back and recounting all the details of the past. But then she did this, and then that happened like that, and that. And you, the more they talk about it, the more you realize they're not over it. Because God says, "Do not consider the former things." Right? God's doing a new thing, but we're, if we're stuck in the old thing, how can we see the present thing that He's moving on? And so we go into all of these in the book, Fear Fighting, to help us be able to rise above what we see in the natural and to move into the spiritual. We're told to fix our eyes on heavenly things. So that's just a little summary of the eight fear inducers. That is so good. Thank you so much for sharing all of those with us because as I just listened to the list, those are just things that I see come up again and again as I talk to other Christian women and even in my own life. But there's one other thing I want to ask you about fear. And that is that I know some degree of fear is normal and even helpful in our life. You know, fear is not always um, from Satan. There is an element of, you know, you are scared of walking in front of a bus because that is actually legitimately bad for you and you should not do that. Um, but how can we know when we are feeling these feelings of fear or inadequacy, if that is something that is coming from Satan who is just trying to to tear us down or if that is something um, where there's a legitimate cause behind it where it's actually God talking to us um, to say hey you need to do better in this area because I do believe God will tell us hey you you know you need to work a little bit more on this area but how can we tell the difference if we're starting to feel these negative feelings where they're coming from such a good question Brittany Ann because you're right if you're in the woods and a bear is coming Fear really helps you have that right flight or fight instinct, which you need, like you need to run or you need to, I mean, maybe it's a bad thing to say, but pull out a gun or whatever it is, whatever it is. If you're seeing a bear in the woods, you need to do what you do to survive. And so that's so legitimate. Um, the question that I like to come under it is, number one, is it a fear that is about uh, your safety, right? Where it's like you're fearing because there's a legitimate cause. Or, and then number two, to ask yourself, um, what is underneath, underneath the surface level of what I see, right? What is under that? Like, say I fear, um, you know, my husband is never going to change. So underneath of it, I would say to myself, okay, underneath that fear, 
is it truth I'm believing or is it a lie I'm believing? Like, and you have to get really honest with yourself. You have to really be able to say, I'm going to take the risk to be honest. And the lie might be like, well, I don't believe God that you're big enough to change him or he's always been this way and I have, I'm struggling with unbelief here. And then it's at that point you say, Lord, help my unbelief. Like, you don't have to muster it up. You say, Lord, help my unbelief. Or God, give me eyes to see this in a new perspective. And I I love writing things down, right? Like, write out what the fear is on a piece of paper. And maybe even give yourself some distance. Because sometimes when they're in the heat of it, it's heavier. But if we give ourselves, like, a, just a day to think and pray about it, the next day or three days later, right, three days later is a powerful number. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. Three, three days later, things change in perspective. You might be able to say, oh, yeah, I wasn't actually um, afraid. Like when I was thinking of that girl and what she thought of me, I was actually fearing I wasn't good enough. Or I was actually being sensitive because I didn't think the work I brought to her was something that she was going to like. So it was my insecurity. Just be honest and bring it to God and ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. He's faithful. He hears our calls. And another thing that I have heard as well, just to add on to that is, um, and I don't remember where I've heard this, but I've read before that when Satan talks to us, it's more of a feeling of shame of you are not good enough. Whereas when God is talking to us, it's more of, um, it's not going to be shameful, but it's going to be more the behavior that you're doing needs to change. So just really focusing on what is at the root of what you're feeling. Is it you yourself that are terrible or is it what you are doing um, and what is the truth in that? So I just wanted to add that as well. But I also wanted to talk some more about your book, Battle Ready. Can you tell us um, in this book, you're talking more about negative and inaccurate mindsets that we have. I know that you said fear is, you know, one mindset and one thing that we can deal with. What, but what are some other negative mindsets or inaccurate perceptions that we as women often have, often without realizing it because we just see it as so normal? Well, it's a really good question, Brittany Ann. And I'll tell you what we hear. We tend to hear things like, I can't, God won't. This person will always be doing X, Y, and Z. It's impossible, right? Um, I'll never change. Um, the things will always be this way. There is no way. Um, I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. I'm uncertain. All of these thoughts that come into us where, where God on the other hand is saying, Hey daughter, I've laid out all these beautiful promises for you in scripture. You know, I've laid it, laid out treasure for you. I have a heart to help you trust in me. And so we can do really practical things and come into alignment with God's truth so that we aren't thinking negatively. But I, and I always hate using the word negatively because it sounds so like negative thinking, positive thinking. It sounds so worldly almost, but renewed with a renewed mind, right? Because um, think about it. We want to, you have to prepare in advance for a battle. Like we wouldn't go into a battle without a battle plan. You wouldn't go into a hard situation without saying, okay, here's the tactical plan for how I hope to win. If you were going to go and face all these people um, that wanted to, you know, take you down, you'd have some sort of plan, whether it was to go hide behind a bunker or come out. And the truth is that we want to learn how to prepare ourselves in advance. So when the hard times of life come, we aren't reacting defensively to what's coming against us saying like, oh my gosh, I, I, don't know, I don't know what to do. I'm resorting to worry or I'm just laying in my bed and pulling the covers over my head or I'm calling this girl and I'm just venting to her all this stuff or I'm you know trying to run away and pretend like it's not there, negating, excusing, denying, pretending. We don't want to do those things. Like we can face the reality because God fights our battle battles, right? While we're silent, the Lord is fighting for us. And the question is, how do we you possess those things rather than just profess them from our mouth? That's what battle ready is all about. People have told me like, oh, we're circling it. We're underlining stuff. Like this is not stuff. You got to go slowly through the book because it's something you want to return to. And it becomes part of you rather than it just being like head knowledge. Like, oh, I hate head knowledge. Like if we're going to read the Bible and just let it sit in our head without it living through our life, what a waste that is, you know, like it's got to become part of us. And part of that happens through the work of the Holy Spirit, who is a refiner and who, who um, instructs us and guides us into that life change. And um, I hope that the book is a powerful, um, just working of the Holy Spirit as people read it. So that hopefully helps answer your question a little.
Yeah, definitely. I love the analogy that you use of going into battle. You need a battle plan. You can't wait until you are there. You have to know ahead of time. And this is something that has been so helpful for me in my life. And I've talked about it before on various things. Um, but to sit down and actually, like you said, write things out, get the scripture, know what the scripture is so that when you are facing these things, you already have a plan and you know what to do. So next, I would love if you would walk us through a little bit. How can we create this battle plan. You said that we need to have one, but how do we actually go about very practically speaking in our lives, creating that battle plan? What do we need to do so that we're ready when Satan comes at us? Because we know that he's going to. Absolutely. There are probably like a hundred different tips in the book battle ready, which could feel overwhelming to some, but like I said, different seasons, different tips, different thought processes, different tips. So, but I want to just share the nut and the bolts, right? Because I love the simple gospel. I just love the simple gospel. Like I heard somebody say recently, like maturity is just someone who just relies on the simple gospel. And, and the truth is that we have the truth. We know the truth. The truth shall set, shall, shall set us free. Like that's it. The truth shall set us free. So if you can just write down your thoughts that are holding, they're either, they're holding you back, they're hindering you, they're stopping you, they're creating faithlessness, they're destroying your relationships, they're making you afraid, they're creating uncertainty, any of those kind of things, anything that's doing any of that, you start to write down when you have that thought. Like, I, I never work out. I, um, my husband will never love me. Whatever, write them down. And then you pray over them and you say, Father God, I ask right now that you would reveal your truth. You would point to your word, that you would speak your heart over these things. And I surrender to you my interpretation of the world to receive your renewal in these places. And then ask him, you say, for this, my husband will never love me. God, what is your truth? And maybe he'll bring to mind a scripture or speak something directly to your heart. You write that down and you make a list. So you have one column, all the lies, the other side, all the truths. And you make this list of things that God tells you, okay? And then you take that list and you start speaking that, praying that, God, thank you that this is the truth. Thank you that this is, you are the light. Thank you that this is what you say. Thank you that this is who you are. Maybe you go into the Bible, you write down the promises, right? Because how many times in God's word did he say, because of their faith, they got X, Y, and Z, or because they believed X, Y, and Z happened. I was just reading in Daniel, Brittany, and this morning, and I, it just really struck me. And it, Daniel, right, when he went in the lion's den, he got out because he said, my God saved me. And it says here in Daniel 7, 23, the king was overjoyed in order that Daniel be lifted from the den, right? Because God had saved Daniel from those lines and protected him because Daniel was a faithful man. But here's the line that I want you to hear. Not a scratch was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Why was not a scratch on him? Because he trusted in his God. And that's what we're running after, you see. It's the trust that the Lord is building up in the book Battle Ready. It's the trust. And it's not our trust. The, the faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. So we come and we get that from him. It's his faith. It's his trust. It all belongs to him. We get that in us and nothing can stop us. We get that going for us and relationships are healed. We get that moving ahead and lives are being changed. You see, it's his trust. And so that's really what this book and getting after the lies and the truth and moving them from our head to our heart and just from professing them to, to, um, to professing them to possessing them. That's what we're after here. I love that. I love that story of Daniel that you shared. And I know I've seen this play out in my own life as well. So I can personally say, yes, this works. But do you have any examples that you could share with us that you are able to share that talk about times in your life when you have been in a, just a negative place dealing with spiritual warfare or Satan is, you know, trying to tempt you to believe these lies and you have had to use this process and seeing results in your own life? Absolutely. It's so funny because I was with my husband. We were at this prayer gathering, okay? 
and at church. And for some reason, Brittany Ann, he was having, like he just, when he was praying, it was as if God's words were coming through his mouth and he was praying for one specific person. And I just saw how powerfully he was praying. I was like, wow, he is, he is moving mountains right now. I don't know. It wasn't Emmanuel. It wasn't my husband. We know that. It was God working through. But in that moment, I was sitting there kind of having like that bah humbug moment. I was thinking, Oh my gosh, God, you're using him so much. And I thought I, I thought I was a good prayer warrior. I thought I had good things to say. I thought I was making a difference here. And it became I, I, I. Well, first sign that there might be some work that you need to do, right? Because that's the first thing the enemy loves to do is put us into I, I, I. And so I went home and I just said, God, forgive me, first of all. And maybe that's a first step for many of you is just if you're having this situation happen, if you're having these thoughts come about, just say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I think to say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, it opens up our heart. Like I'm thinking of like a moonroof on a car. It just opens up the car. It opens up your heart so the light can come in and then you can actually receive what it is that God has for you in healing. Because if you're still saying that you haven't asked for forgiveness, your moonroof is closed. It's closed. It's not receiving. And so Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. And then I said, you know, what's the truth? And it's like, the truth is more power to him. More power to him. More power to her, that woman who's put you down. Or more power to her, that woman who looks like she's ahead of you. Or more power to her, the woman who makes you feel a little bit on edge because she's so confident and you don't feel that way. More power to her. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in him. Thank you, God, for how that person he was praying for was getting healed up and encouraged. Thank you, God, for that, right? And so we have to take the moment sometimes. I know we're all busy and we're doing iPhones and phone calls and shift, bringing kids left and right. No, that's all just busyness. But the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings wants to sit down with us and get into the deep, deep roots of our heart. We just have to give him the chance to do it. That is so great. I just love that. Can you share with us also, I am dying to know, as we go through this process ourselves and we learn to create a battle plan and we learn to walk it out and we start to see some of this change in our lives, what are some of the most common pitfalls or mistakes that you see or that women are likely to make as they start to do this process? A very good question. What we want to do is remember that number one, there is no perfect human. <laughs> there is no perfect woman. Like we are all going to have very good plans and fail at part of it. Okay. Because we're works in progress, but he who has begun the good work in us will be faithful to complete it. Right. And we reap a harvest if we do not give up. There is joy in the learning. So if you're doing something new and you fall down and skin your knee, you just get back up again and say, okay, God, thank you. Thank you that I'm learning. Thank you that you're showing me a new way. And the failure is not failure when you look at it through the eyes of Christ. It really isn't. I mean, maybe there, again, maybe you need to go back to repentance on some things. Okay. So you want to do that. Or maybe you need to go confess to some people. You need to do that because you got to clear that path for the Lord so the Lord can come in. But what you, but what you do is you say, God, you're showing me X, Y, and Z. I'll tell you guys this. I kind of felt like, um, I was expecting God to move on some things in big ways, and, and it didn't happen. It didn't happen the way I expected. And in that gap, I was able to see and acknowledge during that waiting period how I had been prideful in some certain ways, but I didn't even recognize it. i had been taking some credit from God, but I couldn't even see how I was doing that until there was this gap of dryness of parched land, which then in that place of parched land, I thought, whoa, God, I see how I'm kind of being like my son. Like I'm being ungrateful. Like I'm like, like saying to my seven year old son, you need to be grateful. You know, you need to say thank you. And I'm like, when have I said thank you to God for the stuff that he's doing for me? I'm just like my son yet, yet I'm, I'm prideful. And I started to realize in that moment, the goodness of the Lord for withholding because woe be it to me to go to some place and to have him do these great things and to me be walking with pride. What is it to gain the whole world and to lose your soul in the process? What a scary thing that is. What, and some of us are wanting to run after these big dreams that we want God to do this and that. And God's like, no, I really, you know what? I care about your heart more than I do about you getting all these extracurricular gifts and, and bonuses in your life. 
And thanks be to God that he takes care of. He's the good shepherd of our soul for eternity. And so those are the kind of shifts and things that, that we, we can get into our mind when we have a renewed mind. I'm just loving this conversation, if I can just say. But I just want to ask you one last question. And that is, as we are listening to this right now, if there is somebody who is listening who says, okay, this is what I need. I have been dealing with all of these negative thought patterns. I'm just not in a good place right now. And I am ready to think about starting to create a battle plan and figuring all of that out and she's on those very first initial steps, what advice would you give to somebody in a situation just like this? First of all, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you that you're taking a moment to invest in God's promises, in his truth, and in trusting him. That's the first step, right? We said, by trust, he does it all. By faith, he does it all. So I'm proud of you for taking that step out in faith. Don't quit. Don't give up. He will be faithful to complete the good work that he's starting in you. I believe you can do it with him. With him. He is your He is your path. He is behind you as your rear guard. He's above you. He's below you as the rock of Christ. You can do it. And I just want to encourage you to get the book battle ready and to start to just receive and, and chart your path. Ask the Holy Spirit say, where do you want me to go from here? What do you have for me down my road? What does it look like for me to journey with you? Because I'll tell you, I, I believe like it's great that we have teachers and preachers and counselors, but the Lord has a unique path for each of us and I want you to be on it. And so I just want to pray for you as you take this step out. I want to pray for all of you. Father God, I thank you. First of all, for Brittany. For Brittany Ann, what a beautiful woman of the Lord who is equipping godly women. God, I thank you for her ministry. I thank you for her heart. I thank you for her love. I thank you for this podcast that she's doing. God, I ask for you to bless it and to bless her and that she would go on to bless many, many women, Lord, um, with your heart. And God, thank you for the woman who's going to be battle ready. Thank you that these women will be women who trust in the Lord. Lord, we will not lean on our own understanding. We will not lean on our own mindset or what we see in the world around us because the truth is, God, it's we trust by faith and not by sight. We trust in what, we, what, what you see, what you have for us, what your word says, what Jesus did for us, how Jesus lived, not by what we see happening around us. And so I pray for new life to come forth, new thoughts to reign, the mind of Christ to take over, and for a grace, such an equipping and empowering grace that we could break through into the greater mindsets that you have for us in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, thank you for this time together. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, Kelly, for agreeing to talk with us today, for sharing all of your knowledge and passion and prayers with us today. It has been so good to talk to you. Thank you, Brittany. And it was a pleasure. Wow. That was a lot of hope and encouragement and biblical truth all packed into one podcast. And I hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode just as much as I did. If you did and you're ready to learn even more about how you can create a battle plan for your life to take those negative thoughts captive and trade them in for the truth and the freedom that God promises us instead. I have a few resources for you that you're not going to want to miss. So check out these show notes. I am going to link to Kelly's website, to both of her books. And I also have a few articles on the Equipping Godly Women website that are going to be very helpful for you as well. Um, especially my How to Take Thoughts Captive to Christ just is so helpful. Breaks it down step by step what to do. And I also have an article about who I am in Christ that lists a lot of the um, truths that you're going to want in order to start fighting these lies. And I know that Kelly has a lot of those same resources on her website as well. So absolutely check out the show notes where you can find links to all of that and more. And as always, if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? I come back regularly to interview and just to share all kinds of thoughts that are going to help you on your journey as a Christian woman to be the amazing woman that God is calling you to be and to help you be absolutely all in, in your faith and with your family. So definitely subscribe. If you have not already, check out the show notes and hopefully this is all helpful to you and I will see you again real soon. All right, bye.